car crashes, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts with the attorneys of Hollis Wright. And we welcome you back into another edition of The Attorneys. We've got another great topic for you, of course. We are talking about estate and trust litigation. Go ahead and get in contact with one of the attorneys from Hollis Wright right now. All you have to do is follow the numbers on the bottom of the screen or call 1-844-LAW-TALK. You will reach someone. It is free. It is confidential, and you will talk with a live attorney because they're sitting there waiting to hear from you. We've got a lot to deal with. Carter Clay, first time getting a chance to be with you. Yeah. How you doing, my Good friend? Good to see you, sir. So Good excited to, to be here with you and look forward to many, many shows into the future with you. Absolutely. We've got a great guest as we're talking about estate and trust litigation. So we're going to go ahead and unpack this, right? Yeah, let's jump right into it. Some really interesting statistics out there for a lot of the viewers to think about. So right now, if you look at the millennial generation, about 75% don't have wills. Mm -hmm. uh, Generation X, about 60%. Uh, don't have wills and and baby boomers are still at about the 50 percent mark of, of individuals in that age group that don't have a will to dispose of their assets when they pass away and potentially these individuals are headed for a lot of problems and their heirs are headed for a lot of downstream issues once they pass away because they don't have a will and we've got an outstanding guest here this evening Lindsay Eastwood to kind of help us navigate these waters and talk about the importance of having a will but what's interesting about this show, we're going to put a little bit different twist on it. We've covered this show before, but not so much in the context of litigation mm -hmm. and dispute resolution, maybe between those heirs. Uh, one heir didn't get what they want, and they want to challenge the will. So we're going to jump right into that right now. So Lindsay, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your legal practice and how did you get started in this particular area? Yes, yeah, so my practice is Eastwood Estate and Probate Law, and this is my exclusive practice area. I handle estate planning, estate and trust administration, as well as estate litigation and trust litigation. Yeah. So when we talk about estate planning and estate litigation, sort of 30,000 foot view, what exactly is estate planning and what does it consist of? Estate planning is a process of anticipating and arranging for disposal of assets. And you want to do estate planning during life because at death, oftentimes those decisions are made and you're, if you have no estate plan, then the state of Alabama has an estate plan for you and that's in the Alabama code called the laws of intestacy. So estate planning can be wills, trust, powers of attorney, and those powers of attorney can be durable or springing based on whether they're effective immediately or they're effective on incapacity health care directives, living wills, I know it's a long list, yeah. <laughs> property deeds, as well as beneficiary designations. So what's interesting, and I learned this long ago, is, is I said at the outset that all of these percentages of people in various age groups don't have a will. That's mm -hmm. technically not true. Um, because under Alabama law, you have the opportunity to create your own will and customize it for yourself. But if you don't have a will, guess what? The state of Alabama has a will for you, and it's a statute that basically dictates where your property and assets will go if you pa if and when you when you pass away. Really, is that accurate? Correct. So it's the laws of um, intestate distribution. Typically, it would go to a spouse first. If you have a spouse, if you have a spouse and children, an amount goes to your spouse, and the remaining one half would go to your spouse and then the other one half to the children. Um, if you have a blended family where your children may be with your spouse and then may also be with someone else, then those children would not inherit. So there, there are different levels after a spouse and children would be out of the picture, then it would be parents who would inherit your estate and then if not parents, your siblings, and then it goes out to your, to your relatives. So a lot of people are afraid that if they don't have a will, then everything's going to go to the state of Alabama, whereas in reality, it would go to your kin. It might just yeah. not be the relatives you want. Now, Art, what, what's so interesting about that is I know you guys and me included, we all get along with family members really well. Absolutely. Don't have any disputes, but there are people out there that have disputes and issues with various family members, and what they need to understand is, is that if they die or pass away without a will, then Alabama's law is going to dictate where their assets go. And those assets, to some extent, may go to family members that they don't want to get that property or asset. And so that's just one of the many reasons as to why you would want somebody to consult with you on that particular type of topic. Absolutely. And just making sure that 
that you have a plan in place. You know that you have a, te a team of people who are assisting with the estate planning. That may be an accountant, a tax advisor, a financial planner, but really estate planning is important even if you don't have many assets because there are things that you can do in a plan to eliminate potential litigation down the road. Um, yeah. As I was listening to that, um, and the Alabama will that will be in place whether you have one written yourself, how long does it take you to go through that process though? If I've got a will that an attorney will put together for me and the state takes control of it, does it change the time limit in terms of asset distribution? It certainly makes it longer. So under Alabama law, an estate has to be open six months before it can be closed. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you might be negotiating with creditors if the estate has debt. Whereas if you had an estate plan or a trust where your beneficiary designations were correctly made, your deeds were correctly handled, then your property could be sold immediately. And then the proceeds of that could go into a trust account that would distribute when all of the assets had been, had been sold and all the debts resolved. Yeah. So it definitely makes things easier when there's a plan. Breaking it down on kind of an elementary level, if, if somebody wanted to create a will, sort of what are the main aspects or main components that they have to satisfy under Alabama law to create a valid will? Well, you have to have testamentary capacity. And right. this is kind of where a lot of the litigation components come in. And what is testamentary capacity? You have to know who you are, what you have, and who you want to give it to. So it's a really low threshold. Um, in, in Alabama law, it talks a lot about lucid interval. You can actually have a dementia diagnosis and draft a will and have an attorney prepare that for you and that be a valid will as long as you meet that threshold and as long as it's a lucid interval. And to combat potential litigation, what I would recommend is potentially after a will execution or a trust execution, having that person go out to lunch with a loved one, maybe who's not a beneficiary under the will. So they can say, no, I met with so-and-so on this day and they were lucid, they did have capacity, yeah. in addition to potentially needing doctor's records to shore, to shore up that testamentary capacity. Do you have to have witnesses to a will? Does the signature have to be notarized by the person uh, who's creating the will? How does that work? Yes, so you do have to have two witnesses um, on a will in Alabama. And that's one of the, kind of the few requirements. They don't have to be in the room at the same time. Um, one witness can come on a Saturday and then you can have the next witness come on a Sunday. The testator or the person who's writing the will just has to ask the person or acknowledge that they can't speak um, to, to attest to their will. The testator doesn't even have to write their name. They can just write an X if that's their mark. Let's say if they were um, illiterate or couldn't write or um, had a um, an exceptionality maybe where they, they had mobility issues yeah. and, and couldn't write. I know we're about to go to the first commercial break, but before we do so, talk about the cost of a will. And I know that can vary <clears throat> depending can. upon what they do, but just sort of your basic level uh, type will, what is sort of the price range that somebody could expect to have to pay to get that done? I think, I think it's so varied based on the complexity of assets, but Legal Services of Alabama provides free wills for people who live in Birmingham, any person, no matter what your age is. Um, if you're over 60, um, they'll, also, they'll also provide those services. Um, with my firm, I charge typically about $700 to prepare a will, power of attorney, health care directive, and a living will, and to review property deeds. Yeah. And then for a trust, it's about $2,500 for one person or $3,500 for two people. But those, you know, those, um, it's a lot of money, and I understand that it's an investment, but it also saves money when you're yeah. on the other side. In the grand scheme mm -hmm. of things, it's fairly inexpensive when you think it about is. it. It is. Off to a good start. Certainly information that those of you at home watching getting that information. I also want to remind you that if you have questions, all you have to do is call 1-844-LAW-TALK and you can reach one of the attorneys at Hollis Wright right now. We are dealing with estate and trust litigation. We've got much more still ahead. Stay with us. The attorneys continues right after this. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright, a personal injury law firm, and thank you for watching The Attorneys. We hope you, a friend, or a loved one never needs legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple, to provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free and all fair. So if you have questions specific to the show or related to other accident or injury topics, call, email, or text us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or go to hollis-right.com and click on the Contact Us button. 
We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and watching The Attorneys. The Attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. When we started the show eight years ago, my hope was we would be able to do what we do best, which is to help people answer real-world legal-related issues they have in their life. People oftentimes are confronting various legal issues and problems in their lives that range across the gamut of legal practice areas. Bankruptcy, criminal law, family law, just to name a few. And to be able to have a 30-minute platform or format to where we can just cover various legal topics once a week uh, that's obviously the primary focus of the show. That we would be able to use the resources of the many lawyers we have at this law firm to create a plan that had a lasting impact that also gave back to the community at the same time. And I think we've done just that with the attorneys. Did you know when you hire Hollis Wright, you are still in charge of your case? Our attorneys at Hollis Wright are client-centered, allowing you to help us control your case and result. At Hollis Wright, your result matters. And we're back. You're watching the attorneys as we talk about estate and trust litigation. A lot of good questions already. And we're listening to you, of course. All you have to do to get in contact with one of the lawyers at Hollis Wright is to call 1-844-LAW-TALK. And we're also rolling the information at the bottom of the screen if you have any doubts about how to get in contact with us. But it is a free, confidential call that you can make right now and it's talk to someone live. And I think that's the important thing, to be able to talk to someone live and to be able to see someone live about what we're doing and what we're talking about now because this is a conversation that we all need information about. Yeah, and I do want to remind the viewers that if they can't get through the phone lines tonight, we are very busy answering a lot of calls. They can mm -hmm. always call us at the same number, 844-LAW-TALK, or mm -hmm. our local number is 205-324-3600. They can reach us throughout the week at any point in time. Absolutely. But, Lindsay, we've all seen movies and TV shows where you've got an individual that's sitting there with their mom or dad on their deathbed and they're saying, mom or dad, I, I know you only left me, I'm getting 25% and my brothers and sisters are getting uh, their fair percentage, but you know, I'm the one that's taken care of you all these years and they start to broach the subject of, of redrafting the will. Um, and in the, in the shows involve lack of testamentary capacity or lack of mental capacity to do that. Is that something that really happens in the real world? It absolutely happens. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was dealing with a case where, you know, the bad sister was distributing money from the father's deathbed in the hospital room, you know, to her own account. Um, and that's a breach of fiduciary duty because she was his agent as a power of attorney. And one of her responsibilities would be not to commingle those funds. And these were not funds that she was transferring for the purpose of final expenses. Um, her account later showed that after those distributions, um, you know, she went on shopping trips and booked a vacation. Um, so that's a classic case of a state litigation where the other, the other children of this deceased now person is, is pursuing um, claims against her. I've, I've heard of cases um, where a will was torn up you know, at a, at a wake after somebody passed away because they didn't like what it said, even though it was a valid will and trying to reconstruct that or tape that back together and have that admitted to probate um, was a case that I, I recently had. And, rec and most recently, I'm working on a, a case involving undue influence, um, a case where one person has said that another person made a beneficiary change based on that closeness of relationship. An undue influence happens when a person's will is overcome. Um, and that could be because that person is vulnerable. Maybe they've lost a spouse and they're on their own and they're trying to make financial decisions that when they're not used to making those and they rely on some outside family member to try to help them and that person takes advantage. Um, and they can be very sad. You know, what about situations where when you have a will or even if you don't have a will, there's going to be a person or persons that are appointed what we call personal representatives or executor or administrator where they're basically responsible for marshalling and gathering the assets and property. 
have, do you see situations where those administrators or executors, I guess, abuse their responsibility and sort of misappropriate funds or misallocate funds to their own personal gain? Is that an area of litigation that occurs? Absolutely, and there, there are ways to resolve that. You know, motions for accounting, when you have any concern of um, a breach of fiduciary duty or waste even, um, sometimes the person may not be actively transferring money from the estate account to their own personal checking account, but they might be not paying insurance on a home that's in an estate that needs to be sold. And as a result of not paying insurance, there was a storm and then the house might have been destroyed. So there are lots of ways that someone in charge of an estate can act, can be a bad actor. Some of those are very intentional. Um, commingling of funds, moving money from an estate that's due to the beneficiaries, but also it can just be poor judgment. They've got too much going on in their life and they just are not handling the business of the estate and as a result wow. those assets are dissipated. Can I go back to something you said earlier when we first came back from break? You said they actually tore the will up I know. at a wake. How do you keep that from happening? I think making sure, that, I think in that, in that particular context, it would have been helpful for people to have a copy of that will so that you weren't having to, to tape it up. Under the Alabama Rules of Professional Responsibility and the Alabama Bar, you're supposed to keep a file for six years um, before a file could be destroyed. But really, estate planning attorneys, and that's another advantage to having your will drafted by an attorney, are required to keep that, that will on record in perpetuity as long as that person is in practice. And then after that person closes up their practice, they should be giving that will to another attorney yeah. um, to make sure that those are available. Let me ask you, do you recommend if somebody is creating a will and they're going through a lawyer like yourself, do you recommend that the heirs or the distributees that are in the will, that they get a copy of the will at that point in time? Or do you think that that opens up the potential for problems I guess down the road while the person is still living? What? I think it's a great question and it's probably up to the individual circumstances of the family. Um, I, would, I would leave it up to the client. If a client wanted me to provide copies of the documents, I typically do those electronically so that it's easier to find in an, e in an email um, you know, down the road when the document may be needed. But I would, I would leave that to the client. I think that if you produce a copy of a will or a trust to the beneficiaries, then they certainly know what's in it and that might cause them to take mom or take dad to another attorney. Yeah. And then you see a succession of documents drafted. Talk a little bit about this because I think this is important for the viewers to understand that not all property or assets or uh, cash, so to speak, um, has to go through a, a probate process or go through the will. There is a way to have it set up to where individuals will automatically receive a particular asset or property at the time of your death without it having to go through a will. Do you understand what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, talk a, a little bit about that. Absolutely. Beneficiary designations. You know, if you take nothing from, from the show, please take this. Please go to your banks. I don't care if your checking account has $400 in it. Making a beneficiary designation on that checking account payable on death or even if it had $2 in it because there may eventually be money in that account and you don't want your family to have to go through the process of finding an attorney like myself to open up the estate when it could just pass through beneficiary designation. That can be done on your bank accounts, that can be done in your CDs, that can be done on your stocks. That can be done on bonds. Um, they're just life yeah. insurance. Yeah, life insurance retirement. is a great example. So mm -hmm. when you take out life insurance, they're going to ask you who is the beneficiary. Right. Uh, you can put a particular person or you can put your estate. Mm -hmm. But if you want it to go to a particular person, if you just write their name in, when you pass away, that particular person is actually going to receive yeah. the face value of that life insurance money, regardless of what the will says or right. if there is a will. So mm -hmm. I think that's important for people to understand. And to shore that up when you make those changes making sure that at least your financial advisor or life insurance aid, um, broker is in the room, that you tell as many people as possible that you're making these changes so that it's not done, you know, it's not done in, in a closet, you know, that it's open and available to everyone to know what, well, what your wishes are. We are not done yet. Still more information ahead. Good information that you're getting right now on estate and trust litigation. We're going to take a break. Also want to remind you, though, you can Get in contact with the attorneys on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Follow, like, subscribe. Make sure that you're in touch throughout the week, not only on Sunday nights, but we certainly got much more ahead for you. Stick around. The Attorneys continues after this short break.
I'm attorney John Spay with the Hollis Wright Law Firm. If you have ever had a personal injury claim, the attorney handling your case has likely told you that a portion of your settlement would have to be used to pay back your health insurance company for the medical bills that they paid relating to your injuries. This is called subrogation. In this week's Legal 411, we are answering the question, what is subrogation and how does it affect your personal injury claim? When you purchase health insurance, you sign a contract with the health insurance company, which provides that in exchange for you paying a monthly premium, the insurance company will pay your medical bills when you're injured. Now that contract has a paragraph that gives your health insurance company the right to seek repayment for the medical bills they paid if you in turn use those medical bills as a basis to recover from a third party that caused your injury. The idea is that your health insurance company would not have had to pay your medical bills if it weren't for the wrongdoing of the third party. Now, health insurance companies routinely put attorneys on notice of their subrogation claims by outlining exactly which medical payments the health insurance company is claiming a subrogation claim for and for what amounts. Throughout the handling of your case, your attorney should be aware of the amount of subrogation your health insurance company is claiming and whether all the claims subrogation is related to your underlying personal injury case. That way, if your case resolves, your attorney can then negotiate a reduction of the health insurance company's subrogation claim. Subrogation is one of the many moving parts that can affect your personal injury settlement and what you stand to recover. Please remember, your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. Remember, a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and our promise to you. Thanks for watching The Attorneys. At Hollis Wright, we don't make empty promises. So here's a promise you can bank on. If you've been injured in an accident and want tough, aggressive, and relentless representation that wins a lot, you'll get it at Hollis Wright, where your result matters. Welcome back. If you're watching The Attorneys, we want you to make sure you take advantage of this opportunity to get in contact with a live attorney at Hollis Wright right now. All you have to do is call 1-844-LAW-TALK and you can reach someone. It's free, it's confidential, and they're standing by to talk to you. We're talking about estate and trust litigation right now that we really need to, to, to go ahead and get to that final stage because you've been given some great information. A lot of people at home are, are paying attention and now we're gonna get to the, the finish line. Yeah, I wanna talk about two or three mm -hmm. areas that I think will be of great interest to the viewers. First of which is divorces. Obviously the divorce percentages or statistics in Alabama are high. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of divorces and the potential problems that can arise from a husband and wife getting divorced and not taking care of estate planning issues upon divorce. It can be an absolute nightmare. And my strongest advice, if there's a separation, go, go back to your estate planning attorney and revoke any existing power of attorney so that your mm. soon to be ex-spouse is not in control of your finances. Immediately making beneficiary designations changes, like I said, was so important. Going to the bank, taking them off of your account. Um, while you're still in those disputes with your divorce attorney about assets, don't forget about your estate planning. Um, there are certain ERISA rules that require retirement accounts to pass to a spouse. So if it's an ex-spouse, you know, I think that they're going to hold you to that. I think that they would still, the asset would still go to the ex. So if you don't want your spouse to receive those, you need to make those changes immediately. And then I'd say prenuptial and postnuptial agreements you know, made famous by Kanye West, who's had his own marital issues yeah. as, as of late. Um, you know, you don't have to go into it with a, the thinking of, my new spouse is gonna be a gold digger, or we want prenup. You know, yeah. this is just smart, smart decision making. Well, and, and the current spouse, if you pass away, the current spouse is probably not gonna be real happy with you if they find out you mm -hmm. failed to remove the ex-wife right. from the life insurance as the beneficiary. I could see how that could, could cause some real issues. Absolutely, and making sure that there are provisions so that life insurance goes to your kids if they're being, um, if they're living with another, your ex-spouse, you know, is important too. How about blended families? So mm -hmm. 
somebody gets divorced, they get remarried, the person they get married to has their children, they have their own children from a prior marriage, what issues do you see there that need to be accounted for? I still think a prenuptial agreement is important in that context and just a lot of transparency about what each person wants in their own, um, their own estate planning. Sometimes I've seen it where there's one trust created and the distributions are the same, where one spouse is giving equally to the stepchildren yeah. and then sometimes people really want it to be separate and they want to have their own trust and their assets go to their children and the other spouse has assets going to their children but making sure that deeds are properly drafted into those trusts are really important and then again the beneficiary designation and I could see how that could change over time you get married they have their kids you have your kids but once you're married 10 15 years down the okay. road uh, that those types of things can change after trust has been established yep. no pun intended yeah. the lawyer can help you through that process because prenup that's a difficult conversation for a lot of couples it is and a prenup can be invalidated if both if both parties are not represented so you can't just bring your spouse to an attorney and then one attorney represent both parties. You know, a prenup would be invalidated if each party doesn't have his or her own representation. What do you recommend to young couples that have young children? Of course, they're thinking, oh, we'll never pass away. Right. Uh, tragically and unfortunately, uh, couples do pass away all the time in terms of who gets the children and the guardianships that need to be set up. What do you recommend in that regard? Even if you have no money, draft a will with a guardianship provision. At, at the end of the day, if, if both people passed away, then what the judges are going to look look to, whether it's you're in Jefferson County, Shelby County, Baldwin County, um, they're going to look at that will to see whom the, the deceased person wanted to be the guardian of their children. Yeah, My brother has young children, and he and his wife asked me the other day if my wife and I would take their their two young children, soon to be three, mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> of course I would, brother. Ask, ask the people. You want to make sure that people <laughs> that are they're up aware for that of what's in there. Right, that yeah. they're up for that responsibility. Yeah. But that's why it's important to have all of those conversations on the front end to, to alleviate the problems on the back end, Absolutely. legally. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Well, what's the final thought on this issue of yeah, trust? Yeah, I again? just think with a lot of things in life, preparation is the key. Uh, planning and preparation in this particular area will help avoid a lot of problems and issues down the road uh, with family members, with heirs, eliminating a lot of these disputes that Lindsay talked about earlier and putting yourself in a really good position to where when you do pass away, it will be a seamless and smooth process. Even if you have to go through the probate court, it will make it a lot easier uh, on your heirs uh, to deal with at your time of death because they're gonna be grieving the loss of you anyway and you don't wanna put that additional burden on them. And there's so many creative things you can do in estate planning. You know, I think a good estate planner is a good communicator and is creative. Whether it's a substance abuse trust, if you have a family member who has a substance use disorder or whether they go through money like water. Yeah. And you want to make sure that there are spendthrift protections because they're being sued left and right or owe credit card companies all over the place. Yeah, just a lot of ways to protect yourself at a fairly inexpensive rate. Absolutely. Lindsay, you are probably a lifesaver for a lot of families. Oh, thank you. I certainly appreciate you being here, Carter. Always good to see you, buddy. Good to see um, you. Good information. And I hope that you guys got the information you were looking for as we delve into this subject matter. But we're always listening to you, and you still have time that you can get in contact with one of the attorneys from Hollis Wright at 1-844-LAW-TALK. Thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by Hollis Wright.